This morning, the Supreme Court heard a challenge to the federal student loan forgiveness plan announced by President Joe Biden last summer. Now, if Biden's plan were allowed to take effect, it would wipe out the entire student debt load for about 20 million Americans, would likely transform the financial conditions of roughly 20 million more, at least according to White House estimates. Student loan forgiveness has been advocated in progressive policy circles for years. It was championed by independent Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders in his 2016 bid for the White House. It has now become at least a provisional reality under President Biden. But Republican-led states, individuals, think tanks are challenging the plan. At a rally outside the Supreme Court, as the justices were hearing oral arguments, Senator Sanders spoke about what forgiveness means for borrowers. They're drowning in this student debt. In America, you should not have to face financial ruin because you want a damn education. I'm joined now by Senator Bernie Sanders, chair of the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, and author of the new book, It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism. Uh, Senator Sanders, um, what is your read of where the situation stands with student loan forgiveness after this morning's argument? Well, I think we have some concerns about some of the questioning uh, at the court level, but we will see what happens. Uh, I happen to believe, as I said this morning, that young people should not have to go deeply in debt, put themselves in financial distress for committing the crime of getting an education. That is totally absurd. We want the best educated workforce in the world, and we should not penalize millions and millions of young people for trying uh, to do that. I hope very much that the Supreme Court understands that what Biden did was perfectly legal uh, and does not overturn uh, that action. You know, one of the things I've heard from folks about this specific policy is that this is uh, the, 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 even if they support what the president did uh, and in and, and forgiving these loans, it's sort of a one time fix. Right. There's a broader problem here. Right. Which is there tuition's is. crazy. And right. you, you, something has to be done going forward, even were the court to allow this to stand. Well, Chris, this takes me to why I wrote the book in the first place. And that is, look, we live in the richest country in the history of the world. Do we really think that hundreds of thousands of bright young people should not be able to get a higher education because they can't afford it? Do we really think that 45 million Americans, often young people of color, need to go 50, 100, 200 thousand dollars in debt because they got an education? Do we really need a situation in where we have a child care and pre-K situation, which is a total, absolute disaster yeah. when everybody knows zero to four of the most important years of human development. Why? In the richest country in the world, when we have more income and wealth inequality, when we have more concentration of ownership, why are we allowing this to take place? You know, it's interesting. You, 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 you highlight something about the, the, the sort of paradox or the way that American capitalism has developed over the last two decades, which is there are lots of things that have gotten cheaper, right? Flat screen TVs, uh, smartphones, all this stuff, right? The pillar core of what would make a middle class life, right? That you could own a home, that you could have health insurance, that you could send your kids to college. All right. those have gotten much, 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 much more expensive over time and, and harder and harder for middle class and, and working class folks to reach. Chris, there is a reason why even before COVID, Life expectancy in the United States is in decline. And the reason is that tens of millions of working people are living under enormous stress. Yeah. They can't afford rent. They can't afford health care. They can't afford child care. They can't afford groceries. And the question again, what this book is about is saying, really, why? Why do we have more income and wealth inequality than we have ever had in the history of this country? Why with new technology? Are we not creating a situation where all of our people have a decent standard of living? I want to ask you about um, uh, an announcement that happened today, which the president announced um, a new nominee for uh, U.S. Labor Secretary. That would be Julie Su, who works in the department already. She was confirmed, I think, a narrow 50 to 47 uh, vote. Um, your, I know that the, the U.S. Department of Labor, labor rights are very uh, important and near and dear to you. Your reaction to that announcement? Well, from every, I don't know Julie personally, but from everything I've heard, she's a very competent individual and would make a, an excellent uh, Secretary of Labor. 